What is up you guys? Hope you're having an awesome day. I'm your host Eamon Hassan and welcome back to another video again from home setup. Deal with it. Now as most of the population heads into uncharted territory amid the COVID-19 pandemic, we are all seeing news reports of mandated government quarantines and self-isolation rules being implemented left, right and center. Now this is something that 99% of the humans on this planet have never lived through before, yet here we are just doing it like it's normal. It's not normal. While global social isolation is new to all of us, isolation in and of itself is not. Today I'm bringing you some scary stories about the dark side of isolation. You know, since we're all in this together, we're all getting bored, it is fine. Let's just jump right into this one. These are the top 10 scary isolation stories. Starting us off with number 10 is Joshua Slocum. Most descriptions of people sensing presences around the world come from lone sailors, mountain climbers, and arctic explorers who've experienced hallucinations and out of body experience. Experiences. In an incident that took place back in 1895, Joshua Slocum, the first person to circumnavigate the globe in a sailboat single-handedly, said he saw and spoke with the pilot of Christopher Columbus's ship, the Pinta. Slocum claimed that the pilot steered his boat through heavy weather as he lay ill with food poisoning. This one doesn't really surprise me. I've seen a couple movie plots like this. What was the one with Shailene Woodley? Adrift? She's a good actress, I'm not gonna lie. Coming in at number nine is Frank Smith. This famous case occurred back in 1930 when British explorer Frank Smith attempted to climb Mount Everest alone. He became so convinced that someone else was accompanying him on his climb that he even offered a piece of cake to his invisible partner. And there's actually exciting new evidence from a research group led by neuroscientist Olaf Blank proving that stimulating specific brain regions can trick people into feeling the presence of a ghostly apparition. Now, I don't know about you guys, but firstly, I would not be making a solo trek up Everest. That's just not gonna happen. And if I did, I would not be offering cake to some a random invisible person that is not there. That's just not my vibe, not me personally. Sorry. At number eight, we have Rich Alati. Back in November of 2018, a professional US poker player, Rich Alati, bet $100,000 that he could survive 30 days alone and in total darkness. First of all, dude sounds a little bit messed up just to begin with, but 100 grand? I'd do it. He was kept in a small, completely dark room with nothing but a bed, fridge, and bathroom. Even with all the resources he needed to survive, Alati couldn't even last the full month. After 20 days, he negotiated his release, taking a payout of $62,400, which is still worth it, I feel. Would you do that? I would do that. In fact, Alati revealed he began experiencing hallucinations by his third day in isolation, ranging from seeing things like the room fill up with bubbles, to imagining that the ceiling had opened up to show him a starry sky, he should have just hallucinated laying in like a hundred grand in cash. That would have gotten him through the 30 days. It would have gotten me through the 30 days, honestly. <laughs> Filling out on the seven star is Yossi Ginsberg. He was an Israeli adventurer and author who came stranded in the Amazon rainforest for three weeks completely alone. He said that loneliness was what he suffered the most from and that he created imaginary friends to keep him company. There was actually a movie made about this that came out in 2017 called Jungle and it starred Daniel Radcliffe as Yossi himself. But I low-key can't see him play anyone but Harry Potter. Like I've seen him in so many movies, I was like, no, you are Harry Potter, nobody else. Now at number six is Natasha Kampusch. And Natasha was an Austrian woman who was kidnapped at the tender age of 10 and held captive in a cellar for eight years. In a biography, she talked about how the lack of light and human contact mentally weakened her. And I mean, yes, Natasha, I'm not surprised at all. It would weaken anyone. Now the cellar had only five square meters of space, had a door made of concrete and was reinforced with steel. The room had no windows whatsoever, was completely soundproof, no one could hear her scream. She also reported that the fact she spent endless hours and days in complete isolation made her a lot more susceptible to her captor's orders and manipulations. This is like the isolation version of Stockholm Syndrome. Sounds like it. Coming in at number five is Shasin. Now this is obviously a fictitious example of scary isolation, but we had to include it. Not everything can be real. In the movie thriller Shots in, Naomi Watts plays a widowed child psychologist who lives in isolation in rural New England with her son, who is also comatose and bedridden as a result of an automobile accident. Now Watts' character descends into a desperate existence and it soon becomes difficult for her to distinguish the phantasms of her imagination from the reality of the creepy ongoings in her house that are apparently haunted. Your house is haunted. Now, Shut In isn't even the first movie to use isolation to showcase how easy it is to become insane. The characters played by Jack Nicholson in The Shining and Tom Hanks in Castaway found themselves in similar predicaments. And although these movies are completely fictional, the depicted toll on a protagonist's psyche from being alone for so long is based on the very real science of social isolation. And I wanted to add these to the list because they are great references. They are dramatized, but they're not wrong. Never wrong. I spit facts only on this channel, people. 
At number four is the nuclear bunker. Back in 2008, a clinical psychologist isolated six volunteers for 48 hours in soundproof rooms in a former nuclear bunker. Now, the volunteers suffered anxiety, extreme emotion, paranoia, and significant deterioration in their mental functioning. They also hallucinated a bunch of shit. I'm talking 5,000 empty oyster shells, a snake, zebras, tiny cars, the room taking off, mosquitoes, fighter planes buzzing around, you name it. Now, normally I'd say this is is really weird about having been on top 10 for nearly two years and nothing is weird to me anymore. It's all just casual day in the life of me. Filling up the Prusa is Michel Seyfray. In 1961, a French geologist Michel Seyfray led a two-week expedition to study an underground glacier beneath the French Alps and ended up staying two months, fascinated by how the darkness affected human biology. He decided to abandon his watch altogether and live like an animal. While conducting tests with his team on the surface, they discovered it took him five minutes to count to what he thought was 120 seconds. I wonder if anyone has lost count just Waiting in isolation. I have. It's been three years now, when really it hasn't even been a month. I'm over it. Nobody talked to me. Now at number two is the world record. A similar pattern of slowing time was reported by Maurizio Montalbini, a sociologist and caving enthusiast. In 1993, Montalbini spent 366 days in an underground cavern near Pizarro, Italy, that had been designed by NASA to simulate space missions, breaking his own world record for time spent underground. When he finally emerged, he was convinced only 219 days had passed and the sleep wake cycles had almost doubled in length. Since then, researchers have found that in darkness most people eventually adjust to a 48 hour cycle and that's around 36 hours of activity followed by 12 hours of sleep honestly i could do that i could do that i sleep so much anyone who knows me in real life knows i sleep so much i think i could do that 12 hours that's easy easy and finally at number one is sarah short two months into sarah's incarceration she started to literally lose her mind she had phantom footsteps flashing lights and spent most of the day crouched on all fours listening through a gap in the door that summer, the 32-year-old had been hiking with two friends in the mountains of Kurdistan when they were arrested by Iranian troops after straying onto their border. Accused of spying, they were kept in solitary confinement and even prison in Tehran, each in their own tiny cell. She endured almost 10,000 hours with little human contact before she was finally freed. One of the most disturbing effects was the hallucination. She was quoted saying, At one point, I heard someone screaming, and it wasn't until I felt the hands of one of the friendly guards on my face trying to revive me that I realized the screams were actually my own. Can you imagine not knowing you're the one screaming? That's how bad your just take on reality is. That's shocking. And that is it for today's video, guys. Now, I thought me being in isolation was bad enough. I am slowly losing my mind as well, but these stories just make me feel a lot better that I'm not any of these people. Let me know how your isolation is going, people. Stay safe, stay clean, keep washing your hands. We'll get out of this soon. As always, I've been your host, Eamon Hassan, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.